be such a benefit. Madam Speaker, I commend this bill to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. I call Chris Pink. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, uh, for the opportunity to um, lead the contribution to the debate on this side of the House. Um, I acknowledge um, first the laudable intention of uh, the Government and the Minister who's just uh, given an introduction uh, to uh, the intent of the bill and, and indeed some of its operation. Minimising miscarriages of justice, um, it almost goes without saying, uh, is indeed a laudable intention. I use the word minimising uh, in deliberately broad terms because uh, a couple of options are presented to us as policy makers, uh, ma'am. Uh, one being to prevent as many uh, in the first, uh, from occurring in the first instance, and then second, how to deal with the prospect that there might have been miscarriages of justice um, that have taken place. Uh, of course, it goes without saying, again, uh, that uh, both of those aims should be uh, taken into account by uh, policy makers. Uh, but I would like to place on record uh, that we believe um, that it may be fruitful if reform is required in this uh, space regarding the possibility of miscarriages of justice to do everything that is possible to reduce the possibility that they uh, take place in the first instance. Uh, that acknowledged, uh, Madam Speaker, I'd like to go on to uh, structure some remarks around a couple of different themes, one being matters of constitution uh, and the other matters of construction. On this side of the House, we have some concerns with um, the relationship of the respective um, branches of government, uh, executive, legislature and judiciary, although not, not particularly the legislature in this part. Uh, but the way that those interact and, and how those would be affected by the operation of this bill if it is passed into law. Uh, as for matters of construction, there will be some um, particular matters that we would like to highlight um, and hope that these will be taken on board uh, by the Government through the legislative process, assuming that it does uh, pass the first reading and beyond. Uh, so, Madam Chair, um, we will be speaking, I hope and expect, um, on a number of different um, aspects of the bill. Um, I'll just summarise those briefly um, before going into a bit more detail on a couple in particular. We'll be talking about the features um, of the Commission as advertised in the bill itself uh, and some pros and cons of those as we see them. Also the question of discretion, uh, the membership of the Commission, the possibility of introducing delays into our uh, justice system, and I, I note that it seems to be a matter that's generally accepted as true that there are already unacceptable um, delays in our court system and our justice system more generally. Uh, expense, the possibility of floodgates opening, uh, the prospect of duplication, uh, the establishment of another government agency, which is not a step that should be taken lightly, uh, Madam Speaker. <clears throat> Consideration two of the standard required for referral, uh, and I do acknowledge that the Minister has um, already made some comments on that, and those are, are duly noted and understood. Um, the possibility that um, a lack of accountability will arise from this mechanism, again, in, um, perhaps in comparison particularly with the current arrangements whereby the Minister uh, himself or herself has um, something of a role. Uh, the place of victims, too, and, and their voice within this process is having been established um, is something that we're also keen to discuss, uh, Madam Speaker, um, along with the particular investigative powers uh, and the ways that the, uh, the bill would operate in practice with, um, the, through the Commission itself, of course. So, without going into those in any more detail, Madam Speaker, in the hope and expectation that others on this side of the House and, and perhaps, too, uh, others on the other side of the House will comment on those, I'd like to turn um, more particularly to examining the features of the Commission as set out by the bill itself uh, in the uh, explanatory note. Uh, first, to receive applications from eligible persons or their authorised representatives. Uh, eligible persons as defined, again I acknowledge the Minister has made this point, uh, living uh, persons who have been um, convicted, um, they feel unjustly, or, or indeed their representatives. Um, but not, on the other hand, by those who feel as though a miscarriage of justice may have taken place uh, the other way round, so to speak, so that if a miscarriage of justice has occurred such that a person has uh, not um, been convicted in circumstances that they would have. So I just note for the record um, something of a lack of balance uh, in that regard. Second, um, the uh, element of um, uh, promotion of its own activities. Uh, in relation to the functions of the Commission. That will be something that the uh, Commission is mandated to do. 
appropriate, of course, that its uh, functions be known so that those who might be able to uh, take advantage of it have the opportunity and the ability to do so, an aspect of the access to justice uh, element of our rule of law. Uh, but I wonder if more thought could be given to improving uh, the ability for the uh, members of the public, in particular those to whom it might apply, uh, to actually know what the current arrangements are. So if, if phrases such as the royal prerogative of mercy are somewhat inaccessible to those who um, might be in a situation of uh, having suffered a miscarriage of justice, then perhaps um, some thought should be given to that in relation in particular to particular ethnic groups that the Minister has mentioned uh, who are not um, availing themselves of that uh, opportunity as it currently already exists. Uh, the undertaking of thematic inquiries um, in relation to uh, miscarriages of justice in general, uh, again laudable in intent but I wonder if that's not already a function of the executive, uh, in other parts of the executive rather, and indeed um, the le legislature. So there's nothing to stop um, this House, or indeed in, including via select committees and so forth, and the Ministry of Justice and the Law Commission and various other bodies, uh, government and non-government agencies and entities alike, uh, making such inquiries. So I wonder what the relationship of the Commission will be in relation to those. The powers to obtain information um, are quite intriguing, uh, Madam Speaker. I do uh, fear that um, not enough thought has been given to how these will play out. Uh, the Minister has mentioned uh, the question of privilege. Um, he's not mentioned, however, and um, I uh, hope I'm not incorrect in saying, actually I hope I'm incorrect in saying that the uh, question of contempt of court is not raised in the bill. I don't know if standard judicial functions will apply to this body, which is judicial in nature, at least to some extent. Uh, it does have the ability to review, it does have the ability to refer, albeit not ultimately to decide. So that's something that I would um, encourage you, sir, to um, consider as uh, at least a matter to clarify one way or the other in terms of whether um, such standard aspects of criminal procedure will apply to the operation of the Commission. I'd like to move now in my remaining time to a couple of other points. Um, one is um, perhaps a matter of drafting more so than policy intent, but nonetheless um, extremely important. At clause 17 of the bill, um, we hear that, and I quote, the Commission may refer a conviction or sentence to the appeal court if the Commission, after reviewing the conviction or sentence, considers that it is in the interest of justice to do so, end quote. I understand, I think, the intention, which is to establish effectively um, a set of criteria such that referrals will be made, um, but the word may, after the word commission, saying that the commission merely may refer a conviction or sentence in those circumstances, seems to me uh, the wrong word. Surely, if the commission, having reviewed the conviction or sentence, does consider that it is in the interest of justice to do so, then it shall or must uh, refer such a conviction or sentence to the Appeal Court. Uh, such is my view, uh, Madam Speaker, and on this side of the House, and again I would encourage uh, and request that the Minister and his team uh, take a close look at that aspect. No doubt there will be other opportunities to thrash out particular details of the Bill, but that's one that did strike me as, as rather significant uh, at this early stage. My final comments, uh, Madam Chair, relate to uh, the membership of the Commission. I'll just note um, reasonably briefly that uh, the qualifications of the Commission um, perhaps are intended to strike a balance between those who are legally qualified, uh, as that term is defined, and those who are not. But I will be making some suggestions, um, perhaps not in my remaining minute, but perhaps through other means, um, by way of suggestion about how that could be tightened up a lot more to ensure that actually we have robust processes that reflect the very real needs of those who are engaged in the uh, criminal justice system, not only those who believe that they have suffered a miscarriage of justice in the sense of being criminals, but also those who are affected directly in terms of victims and of course the state and the people of New Zealand as a whole. Uh, criminal law by definition involves us all, um, at least at a theoretical level, and, and less involved um, than, than those who are um, more um, sadly in the thick of it. Um, but 
with these comments, uh, Madam Speaker, I'll, I'll bring to close uh, my contribution. But as I say, I hope that um, the contributions on this side of the House along the lines of constitutional matters uh, and also matters of construction of the bill will give pause to thought uh, to the Minister on the other side of the House in proposing a bill that we see as uh, somewhat flawed in terms of the way it interacts with the current system and as to specifics as well. I call the Honourable Opito William Seal. Madam Speaker, Tane Pora is a case.